rate and review Marijuana Today daily on iTunes to help us grow our audience. Just find us on iTunes by searching for the term marijuana and let us know how we're doing. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Friday, January 12th, 2018, and you're tuned in to episode 408 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day is the news that Colorado's two U.S. senators have asked the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, the division within the Department of Justice overseeing banking issues, to maintain its current policies for state legal marijuana businesses. As I've reported recently, officials within the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, which also goes by the moniker of FinCEN, was not told ahead of time about the rescinding of the Cole memo by their boss, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, and said they would be adhering to a parallel guidance document established in 2014 about how to handle banks and state legal cannabis businesses. In a letter sent yesterday to Kenneth Blanco, director of FinCEN, Colorado Senators Cory Gardner, a Republican, and Michael Bennett, a Democrat, pointed out the benefits of allowing banks to deal with state legal marijuana, as well as the dangers that could follow any change to that policy, mostly in the form of more cash, bringing less transparency to the system. We'll obviously keep a sharp eye on this one. So we over to the Denver Post to give the good senator's letter a full read. Keeping our focus up in the Mile High State, we have lawyers for marijuana dispensary chain Sweetleaf filing a court motion arguing that four of the 13 bud tenders arrested in last month's raids are immune from prosecution under Amendment 64, the 2012 ballot measure legalizing adult-use marijuana. The 13 arrested bud tenders are accused of facilitating the practice of looping, where customers buy the maximum amount of marijuana allowed per purchase of one ounce before storing it in their car and then walking back in to buy another ounce. As the name suggests, a looping customer returns over and over again to the same shop, often with just minutes separating each visit, to buy multiple ounces. This case has some complexity to it because there are protections for retail workers within Amendment 64, so I'd click over to give this one a full read for sure. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily. Our final top story of the day is a poll just released yesterday by the folks over at Quinnipiac University showing that a large majority of Americans oppose the federal government's meddling with state legal cannabis. A massive 70 percent of those polled were opposed to, quote, the government enforcing federal laws against marijuana in states that have already legalized medical or recreational marijuana, unquote. The demographic breakdowns are as you might expect, but even so, 47% of Republicans were against the federal government's trampling over marijuana states' rights. Click over to Tom Angel's piece on Marijuana Moment for this one, if only to jump again to the actual poll from Quinnipiac, where there are five other questions about cannabis. One of the strongest for our side is the one asking people about their support for medical marijuana. A total of 91% of those polled are in favor of allowing adults to use medical cannabis upon the recommendation of a doctor. There are very, very few things that 91% of Americans actually agree upon. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, MJ Today Media, publishers of this podcast, our weekly show, Marijuana Today, and our popular email newsletter, the MJ Today Media Newsfeed. We're keeping today's spot because we are hiring. We're looking for an assistant editor to help produce the Newsfeed email newsletter. If selected, you'd be responsible for helping to sort through a huge pile of news and headlines to find relevant links to share in the news feed. If you have a great nose for news and want to learn more about marijuana media, then this position might be for you. I should warn you that this is an extremely low paying position, but one rife with opportunities to learn more about the industry and cannabis media. If you or someone you know is interested in learning more about becoming an assistant editor with MJ Today Media, please email me at shay at mjtodaymedia.com. That's S-H-E-A at mjtodaymedia.com. All right, 
Time for the Blitz. Jumping over to the left side of the country, we have news out of California that the state's Department of Finance is projecting that Golden State consumers will purchase around a million pounds of cannabis in the year span starting on July 1st. That projected mountain of marijuana would generate $3.4 billion in retail sales and just over $640 million in state taxes. The department is also projecting that the overall industry will grow at just 22% per year in the opening years of the market, compared to Colorado, which grew at 40% per year, and Washington State, which logged in 50% annual growth. One of the more interesting nuggets out of the state's projection is the assumption that the most frequent cannabis users, those who consume marijuana every day multiple times a day, will drive up to 80% of the overall market. Massachusetts' top law enforcement official is saying that his officers will not be assisting federal agents in prosecuting state legal marijuana businesses or consumers. Public Safety Secretary Daniel Bennett told the Boston Globe on Wednesday that, quote, We have a state law that we're intending to enforce, and the state law was voted on by the people of Massachusetts. We have no intention of raiding a pot shop that is legal under state law, unquote about as unambiguous as it gets. A spokesperson for the Boston Police Department reiterated the same policy with a statement reading, quote, similar to our position on immigration, the BPD will not actively enforce federal marijuana laws at the local level. We'll continue to enforce local drug laws to keep our neighborhoods safe, unquote. Fox 40 News has a good story up about a shortage in the availability of marijuana edibles in California due to changes in the regulations governing their composition and packaging, with one dispensary saying that they had had up to 100 different edibles products available last year, whereas now they'd have just a few. This will, of course, eventually shake itself out as companies catch up to rules mandating that cannabis edibles be split up into individually packaged servings with no more than 10 milligrams of THC per serving. But for now, consumers are being left with few to no options. The North Dakota Department of Health just announced a plan to divide their state up into eight regions to be served by their new medical marijuana system. The eight regions consist of circles 100 miles across laid out all over the state, with each centered around a larger town or city. The state will divvy up and distribute licenses for dispensary operators within the eight new regions. Open up the Bismarck Tribune for a map showing the circular division. The Reno Gazette Journal has an important piece up about a research project looking at the impacts illegal marijuana cultivation has on owl populations. Specifically, the research examines how rat poison spread by illegal marijuana cultivators to protect their crops from native nibblers is making its way up the food chain into local owl populations, where it is proven to be fatal. This is a perfect argument for legalizing marijuana and for strong enforcement of environmental and other safety standards. Open this one up and make sure you're caught up on the issue. Massachusetts Congressional Representative Nikki Songus, a Democrat, recently found herself standing around President Shithole Trump's desk for a ceremonial signing of a bill she had introduced to fight the illicit trafficking of the powerful and dangerous pharmaceutical painkiller fentanyl. Representative Songus seized the moment she was given to make comments about the bill to urge the president to focus more on opioids and less on cannabis. Her exact remarks were, quote, Mr. President, I appreciate your celebrating this bipartisan moment. It's a testament to what can happen for the benefit of the American people when we can come together on a scourge such as fentanyl and the opioid addiction. And I encourage you to focus your efforts on further funding and thinking about opioids and marijuana we can talk about at another time. Unquote. And finally for today, a credit union in the state of Maryland wants medical marijuana dispensaries and other licensed businesses to know that they are open for business. As I've reported on in recent days, there have been some retreat on the part of legal marijuana businesses from extending services to state legal cannabis entrepreneurs after the rescinding of the Cole Memo, but the Bulldog Federal Credit Union released a statement on Wednesday with the headline reading, quote, Bulldog Federal Credit Union to Bank Maryland's Medical Cannabis Industry, unquote. Open up a Marijuana Business Daily for more on this one. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with the end Monday morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. 
In the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at MJ Today Daily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, MJ Today Media, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Jay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.